Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So about six months ago, I got this metal detector, and um, it's one of those things, it's like there's just no good place to set it down. I'm always tripping over this thing. Um, I've knocked it over a couple times, uh, or it ends up taking a bunch of room up on this workbench or my other workbench here in the garage. I'd like to find a way to hang this thing on the wall. Uh, we could hang it from this end, but it's like this real funky shape that's meant to, uh, to support your arm. You, uh, you use it like, like this with this strap around your arm and hold on to this piece. Um, and I guess we could put something underneath there. Maybe even something that goes into here. But what I'm thinking would make more sense is actually if we, this part folds up and down, I'm thinking we could hang it from this end. Um, we've got these two nice curved parts here. Uh, yeah, and then that'd be right side up as well, just from a, I guess, an aesthetics perspective. So let me uh, get the tripod moved here where you can see the workbench better and start taking some measurements and thinking about how this would work. I should mention the other reason I really don't want to hang it from this end is because this end's easy to hold on to uh, if I'm going to hang it on the wall uh, to put it up, whereas uh, this end's a bit awkward. It's got the cord wrapped around it and this guy pivots, so there's no good place to grab it down here. Um, to key it into position and it just I think we can key into these surfaces a lot easier than we could potentially key into something on this end. All right so I fished through my box of misprints and prototypes and stuff like that and I found this guy which uh, this part here is roughly about the right diameter uh, of this curve here. I really ought to just print myself a set of uh, like gauges for curves I end up always just trying to dig through something in the shop or in my box of, of junk for about the right diameter when I am designing, but I usually get lucky, so that's why I haven't done it yet. But So we know that's roughly the right diameter. And this guy is about 34. Uh, this, this sort of comes in, it's like it's, it's tight here at 36, but then it goes all the way up to like 46. Uh, so we'll have to think about that in the design. And then this is also, I don't know if you can see, this is like a flat surface here, but then on this side, it's got like this raised section. So whatever we do to retain this guy on the wall, uh, we have to think about this raised section here, we can't go past that or it's going to sit on it lopsided. And actually, this flat surface is higher than this flat surface. So we'll have to have clearance for that as well. I think if we flip this guy over, yeah, it's just flat on the bottom, so there's nothing fancy we need to do with the, um, the bottom from a clearances perspective. Let's fire up SketchUp and get a prototype together. All right, and here is the design that I came up with. I went pretty thick on the, uh, the base plate for this as well as for these hooks that extend out here, just thinking that I don't want this guy to separate. I don't anticipate there's gonna be a lot of load on the hooks themselves. Most of the weight is gonna be pushing down on these parts here, which should be plenty strong, but I uh, just figured I'd go a little, a little meaty on them. And uh, the plate down here, that is gonna experience a fair amount of load. Uh, the load is gonna be coming out in this direction from the screw here. Really this material up here is 
probably more aesthetic than anything else. We could have just come down at a sharper angle because that's where the stresses in the material are going to be. But I kind of wanted to just match the, uh, the appearance top and bottom. But this guy is plenty thick enough that if we do at least two outer walls uh, in this print, we should be just fine for this guy, uh, even over time. The, the metal detector is not that heavy, but it's heavy enough that I want this guy to be pretty strong. Uh, I also extended uh, the back parts down here to help support that load uh, and also transfer the, uh, that torque pulling on here onto a larger face on the, uh, the base plate. And I rounded off uh, all of the, uh, the sharp corners uh, as well as these up here. Um, I did adjust, if you look, it's pretty much straight on the, uh, the hooked part up here, uh, but then does come out here. I did that to clear, um, if you remember, like there's that, it's, it kind of widens uh, as you get towards the bottom. So I did that to help clear that. We'll see if it clears. I don't know that this is going to fit. I'm probably just going to do this in like a, uh, a draft quality, get something off the bed quick and uh, test it in, uh, in place on the, uh, the metal detector. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and print. All right, and here is our test print. So this is a 0.3 millimeter layer height print with just one outline and almost no infill and only a couple layers top and bottom. So uh, this is not very strong, but should suffice in helping us figure out if this is even gonna fit and work or what we need to tweak uh, to get it there. So imagine this part is screwed to the wall and then we'd hang this on it, so. Now that actually slides down in there really nice. Yeah, we clear everywhere. It kind of binds coming off though. What's going on is we have this, uh, this curve here on both sides is making it so that it goes on really nice. It actually kind of ramps it into place. But when you go to lift off of it, you have to repeat the exact same motion um, where you lift and pull back at just the right rate. Otherwise, it binds. So that's not going to work. Um, or at least it's certainly not going to be ideal. We're going to end up, I'll end up yanking on this thing every time I pull it off, uh, trying to get just the right amount of force. Yeah, see that, that binds on there. That's no good. So I think what we could do is flatten out the curves here. And the other thing I noticed when I, when I broke the supports off of this, we have this really hard edge up here where the majority of the stress is gonna be on this print. So this is gonna be, it's gonna sort of hang against it like, like this, which means we're gonna be putting a fair amount of force uh, pulling these guys back. Now that's also on a layer line. Um, actually, I mean, this is, this is a draft print and I, Still, eh, it's starting to crack. See how much force it takes to break that off. Yeah, I was surprisingly hard to break off for this being uh, just a one outline print at 0.3. But I think what we can do is I think we can strengthen uh, this by just putting a, a little bit of um, a rounded edge on the inside here uh, so that that stress point um, isn't so tight because I noticed with this guy on here, we're not even against that surface. So I just broke half of it off. But if you look at this, there's nothing actually touching that, uh, this corner in here. We're, we're well clear of this when this guy is on the wall, even in this position. Uh, we're still clear of that because of this step here. So we have this plate on the bottom uh, like presses into this outer ring, which means we have this step here that is probably, I don't know, probably two and a half, three millimeters. Uh, so I think we can take that, maybe do a one and a half millimeter or two millimeter, uh, just rounded edge on the inside of here. So let's go make those changes and also flatten out uh, these, these portions here so we have more clearance. Uh, as this gets wider back here. I remember talking about that when I measured this and then I just, I think I didn't take that into consideration in the design. So let's go fix that stuff and print another one. 
All right, there we go. This one looks a lot cleaner because this is printed at a 0.1 millimeter layer height. Uh, so all of the, uh, the transitions are much smoother. And I did this one with three outlines, uh, I think 30% infill and uh, 10 layers top and bottom. So I also enlarged the screw holes just a little bit. Uh, when I test fit screws in, in the other one, the, the inside diameter of the, the smaller parts where the screw goes through was a little bit tight. Uh, it would have worked, but I was already printing another one. So let's try this. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's way better. It doesn't, uh, doesn't bind in there anymore. You could basically just lift up as much as we need to, to clear these, uh, uh, these hooks and then lift straight off. Yeah, big difference. All right, I think this is gonna work. Let's, uh, let's find a place on the wall where this guy's gonna go. I'm thinking over here where my skis are hanging. Should have enough space here. Yeah. That should work. The question is, do I have a stud in the right spot? Because I'd prefer not to put wall anchors in for this. I'd prefer to have those two screws go right in on a stud. So I have to grab the stud finder and see what I have to work with. Oh, come on. Ah, of course, the, uh, I need a stud right in the middle of where the studs are. Well, maybe we can move the ski poles over a little bit and, uh, and get it to fit here. All right, took both screws out and shifted that over uh, the width of, uh, of the, the mounting screws here. So I reused this hole, made a new one over here, took this anchor out, and now we'll just, uh, we'll just quick design and 3D print a white plug. You guys knew I was kidding, right? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. If you're interested in the STLs for this, if you've also got one of these Nocta macro uh, metal detectors, uh, they'll be on my site, fpfdesigns.com. That is linked down in the description. And guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop this week. I do a new video like this every single week. Sometimes it's as simple as hanging something on the wall. Other times it is a totally from scratch design. I always give away the STLs for free. If you're into that sort of thing, uh, consider hitting the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.